Good morning on this Wednesday morning and I hope you're all keeping dry. Uh, the moor is flooded and we're all praying for the waters to recede. We take the worship this morning from the daily office. So let us begin our worship. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised. Out of the mouths of babes at the breast, you have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under your their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the fields, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever moves in the paths of the seas. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. So now we'll read our psalm. It's a part of Psalm 119, verses 1 to 32. Blessed are those whose way is pure, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Those who do no wickedness, but walk in his ways. You, O Lord, have charged that we should diligently keep your commandments. Oh, that my ways were made so direct, that I may keep your statutes. Then should I not be put to shame, because I have regarded for all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart. When I have learnt your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. How shall young people cleanse their way to keep themselves according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you. O oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, O teach me your statutes. With my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statutes and I will not forget your word. O oh, do good to your servant that I may live, and so shall I keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger upon earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with fervent longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the arrogant. Cursed are those who stray from your commandments. Turn from me, shame and rebuke, for I have kept your testimonies. Rulers also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes, for your testimonies are my delight. They are my faithful counsellors. My soul cleaves to the dust. O oh, give me life according to your word. I have acknowledged my ways and you have answered me. O oh, teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, 
and so shall I meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away in tears of sorrow. Raise me up according to your word. Take from me the way of falsehood. Be gracious to me through your law. I have chosen the way of truth, and your judgments have I laid before me. I hold fast to your testimonies. O Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments when you have set my heart at liberty. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So now we'll read the Canticle. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to be fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So the reading this morning is taken from Corinthians, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verses 1 to 19. Pursue love and strive for the spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. For those who speak in a tongue do not speak to other people, but to God. For nobody understands them, since they are speaking mysteries in the Spirit. On the other hand, those who prophesy speak to other people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. Those who speak in a tongue build up themselves, but those who prophesy build up the church. Now, I would like all of you to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. One who prophesies is greater than one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I speak to you in some revelation or knowledge of prophecy or teaching? It is the same way with lifeless instruments that produce sounds such as the flute or the harp. If they do not give distinct notes, how will anyone know what is being played? And if the bugle gives an indistinct sound, and will get ready for battle. So with yourselves. If in a tongue you utter speech that is not intelligible, how will anyone know what is being said? For you will be speaking into the air. There are doubtless many different kinds of sounds in the world, and nothing is without sound. If then I do not know the meaning of a sound, I will be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker a foreigner to me. So, with yourselves, since you in eager for spiritual gifts strive to excel in them for building up the church. Therefore one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power of inter interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive. What should I do then? I will pray with the spirit, but I will pray with the mind also. I will sing praise with the spirit but I will sing praise with the mind also. Otherwise, if you say a blessing with the Spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say the Amen to your thanksgiving, since the outsider does not know what you are saying? For you may give thanks well enough, but the other person is not built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others also 
than 10,000 in tongues. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You who will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. So now we will read the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his only prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. We pray for the day and its tasks. We pray for the world and its needs, and we pray for the church and her life. We pray that this day may be holy, good and joyful. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may offer you our worship and our work. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray to you, O Lord that in the pleasures and pains of life we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. And loving Father, we pray that the waters recede, that the, that the floods go down, and that our anxieties may be removed. This is probably difficult because there are parts of the world that need rain and are now praying for it to rain. But we're asking for it to be less rain. Lord, we pray to you. And Lord Father, we pray for all who are in need at this time. The anxious, the needy, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick the persecuted, all who are in need. We ask that you walk with them, comfort them and give them hope. We pray to you, O Lord. And loving Father, we pray for all those who are now in your heavenly embrace, those who have now left us and there's a gap at the table. Lord, we pray that they are now with you. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for those who grieve, those for those, pray for those who are mourning. Lord, comfort them and give them the hope of eternal life. So let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. So now we pray the collect. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I just remind you that Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock we have Bible study using Zoom. If you want to join us, um, please just notify the parish office and they will give you the link to, to join us. And similarly on a Thursday afternoon at five o'clock we pray together using Zoom and again if you'd like to participate contact the office, the parish office and they will send you the link to join us. Stay safe. God bless. Amen.